Hi, this is Sandy Vansoy for Trekking the Planet. We are very honored and privileged today to be speaking with the Minister of Education for Kenya. And why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about how long you've been in your role. <laughs> My name is Mutula Kilonzo. I'm an elected member of parliament for an electoral area called Boni mm -hmm. in Makwene County. Uh, I have now been serving in parliament for nine years, ten months, and I'm privileged to be here in charge of education. I was transferred to this ministry barely five months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, before then I was minister for constitutional affairs, justice, national cohesion, constitutional affairs, where I facilitated the new constitution, I facilitated the referendum that produced the new constitution mm -hmm. of uh, 2010. Yes, yes, we've heard a lot about that constitution as we've been <coughs> traveling through yes. Kenya. Yeah. So what are your top priorities? I know you've only been in the job, I think, since March, but what are your top priorities for the education department? Reform. 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 Okay. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that I was brought here to facilitate reform. Okay. The old constitution didn't mention education at all, wow. but we have now repeated education in nearly five uh, sections of the new constitution. Uh, we are one of the few countries where education is expressly provided for, uh, particularly for children. It is now a human right mm -hmm. of every Kenyan child to have free and compulsory basic education mm -hmm. uh, in the Bill of Rights. And uh, also in the Bill of Rights, we have also provided the right of every citizen to education. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine my challenge. Yes. Uh, after facilitating the new constitution, I've now been here five months. So my work is primarily to pre create a legal platform, platform because I, I'm a trained lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, not really an educationist, yes. not an educationist at all. Mm -hmm. The only time I taught was teaching lawyers professional things okay. for uh, eight years in our school of law, but I, I'm here primarily to create the legal platforms for implementing the constitution. As you know, our constitution is broad principles of uh, expression of broad principles of the wishes of the population. But my work is now to create the legal platforms and I'm proud to say that I have uh, complied with that. Mm -hmm. I have uh, established the necessary mechanisms. Parliament has unanimously agreed with my proposals That's for wonderful. reforming education. They have passed all the primary bills that I have presented, one for teacher service commission to provide a legal mechanism for the recruitment, deployment, discipline, and other issues attending to teachers. They have also enacted a new law for management of national examinations, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I have uh, facilitated since coming to the ministry. And you'll be surprised, examinations have now started and uh, it's under new law. Yeah. Uh, I've also finished and published a new law for curricular development for Kenya, and that law will be debated in Parliament in early November, and I expect it to pass. I've also facilitated a new law for persons uh, with learning disabilities <coughs> law. Mm -hmm. uh, children, for example, suffering from autism, blind children, uh, children, uh, I've just come from Thika, and to my amazement, we have a Kenyan child who has no sense of touch. Okay. You must come back. Mm. No sense of touch. Wow. And is blind. Oh. Now, educating a child like that, Challenging. when she is a citizen entitled mm -hmm. to free and compulsory basic education, is very really challenging. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Can you guess how she's learning? How is she learning? Using her tongue. Oh my gosh, she, that's really she interesting. She was able to write a message on the screen. Uh, and using our tongue saying, wow. I'm happy to meet the Minister for Education. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, from there I went to another one, uh, sponsored heavily by American charity, charitable organizations called Caribou Center for mm -hmm. young children aged three to seven, mm -hmm. uh, coming from villages uh, who don't have access to technology. And they are now being taught on computers. Okay. Uh, by Instel and uh, other organizations, mm -hmm. and it, it's wonderful. So uh -huh. the focus now is on reform of education. Uh, I came and found a law managing education of 1968, very tired law. Yes. So we are yes. replacing all that. Yes, things change so quickly. That, that is my primary focus, legal okay. platforms okay. for management of education for the youth. Okay, yeah. so, so along those lines, how important do you see education 
being for Kenya. Maybe. For Kenya, yeah. education is everything. Is everything. Without education, we can't promise the, the, the country anything at all. Because modern states have to have educated people. Uh, because otherwise, you can't uh, even to operate an oven in a kitchen. Uh, if you are a cook or you are a house girl, you need to know how to operate the machine to be able to run even an electric uh, iron for ironing a shirt or a blouse. Uh, a child needs education yes. to operate even a single, single TV mm -hmm. for purposes of news. You need education. You have to re operate the remote. Yes. And uh, in any event, without education, our citizens, the young generation, will not be able to relate to the wider world. And we do not want a, a semi-literate population that doesn't mm -hmm. know where the boundaries of Kenya are yes. and so on. Yes. And we have other challenges like tribalism, uh, corruption. We have challenges like you have seen. Yes. Our cities are not as clean as we would want them to be. And uh, traffic challenges. Yes. I am convinced without a doubt mm -hmm. that without basic education and perhaps education leaning towards simple things like uh, technology, mathematics, how to operate simple tools, mm -hmm. how to be able to create things, then the country will be heavily disadvantaged mm -hmm. as compared to the other countries because the globe now is just a village. Yes, it is. Uh, and Absolutely. after all, you are touring the world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and therefore, by interrogating the planet, you are merely confirming my vision as Minister for Education that the world is now a village yes. and therefore we must all relate together using ICT and you can't use ICT if you are not educated. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So along those lines, um, we've read a lot about the underseas cable that's come into Kenya, I think mm. through Mombasa, mm. that's very much, um, I think, going to change the way that you can get bandwidth and, and mm. get access to the internet. How do you see that kind of um, computing really affecting students and what they're going to need to know in the future? And we have already finished phase one of making sure that uh, broadband is available to the greater number of schools in the country. We have laid a fiber optic cable to all the major cities and towns mm -hmm. in the country. Wow. We are now moving into phase two. Mm -hmm. And by the end of phase two, which ought to be end to end by next year, 2013, broadband will be available within the most reasonable distance mm -hmm. for all schools in the country. Mm -hmm. I have now on authority of our rural electrification authority that by the end of this year, all secondary schools in Kenya will be electrified. Oh, you, wow. you do appreciate what that means. It yes, means that's, I can that's place big. a computer in front of every high school student. Yes. I can give them access to the internet. I can give them access to the wider world, uh, 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 homework, mm -hmm. uh, and, and other studies, uh, computer studies, and so on. And so on. Mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's a very fundamental thing. The, the cable is not at the Indian Ocean. It is already in our cities. That's wonderful. And That's uh, wonderful. the objective by next year is to make sure that each school, preferably secondary and primary, they have access to broadband. Mm -hmm. Because by so doing, the other thing that we are doing is encouraging e-learning mm -hmm. uh, so that our children can be able to learn. We are going to put our education content and digitize it mm -hmm. and put it in the sky mm -hmm. and then a child can learn anywhere at any time. Yes. The other focus is to enable our children to be children. Um, I inherited a system where uh, our children were going to school almost every day, including mm -hmm. Sunday, mm -hmm. because of a, a confusion of curricula, the curriculum and other issues, you know, social economic issues. But we, we are developing a, a policy such that our children, because you are only a child in Kenya, in the US is until you are 16, mm -hmm. yeah, it's until you are 18. Mm -hmm. It's a very short time. Yes. The greater period of a human life is when you are an adult. Yes. So we don't want either teachers or parents or other busybodies to interfere mm -hmm. with the right of our child to be a child. Mm -hmm. to, we want to create a window for play, for co-curricular activities like mm -hmm. sports, music, mm -hmm. and uh, talent development. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, in addition to the reforms we are bringing forth, we are also going to ensure that our curriculum also recognizes talents, mm -hmm. so that if a, a, a high school student is a school prefect, or is very good in football, or is very good in music, mm -hmm. the final results 
the final certificates he comes out with should be able to recognize that talent for what it is. Because God does not give all of us a similar talent. Right. You may be very good in mathematics, very good in biology or geography, mm -hmm. but you might also be uh, your, or your brother, your sister or peer in terms of age. May be very good with music mm -hmm. or very good with uh, uh, say football or even just yes, basic leadership. So that's another reform we are bringing on board that's so that wonderful. our children, regardless of talent, are recognized for the talent that God has given them. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, and just one more question. So, as, as I, we told you before we started, we have 55,000 students in 20 countries, 850 classrooms following our journey. Is there anything you would like to tell anyone who's following our journey, just that we haven't covered, or any message you'd like to give it's students really, and teachers around the world? It's, it's very important for the world to know that uh, Kenya has now recognized that real education must begin at early childhood not at age 13 or age 14 and so on and so on. So we are, as a ministry, as a government, we are doing very serious focus, serious, very serious, on early childhood education, age three, at least to age six, mm -hmm. so that we can give them uh, ICT background, mm -hmm. understanding of these machines. We would also like to have people like Bill Gates be born in Kenya, or uh, the people man who developed the bear or even the late gentleman who developed the, the iPhone. Yes, uh, After all, if uh, the grandparents, of, uh, the parents of uh, President Obama was born in Kenya, yes. we can also produce Bill Gates. Yes. We can also produce uh, industries. Absolutely, so absolutely. We are focusing on the talent that we know, on the genes that we, the gene bank mm -hmm. that we know exists in this country mm -hmm. so that we can develop a new generation mm -hmm. to be able to take the country to the next level. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Minister, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.